Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. I'm currently on a small vacation with my girlfriend and as you can see, I'm in a hotel, which means that I had to do a talking head video, but I've got some pretty incredible news that I flat had to cover today. Potentially one of the biggest stories we've seen this year, starting with Epic fixing the CPU usage issue, 500,000 GPUs weren't found, Intel's 11,700K beats the 5950X in single core, a 16GB RTX 3080, and Nvidia's RTX 4000 series will be incredible. So yeah, let's get right to it. If you saw my recent video, you know I went over a major issue that Epic Games Launcher was having, at least that Ryzen owners were having with the Epic Games Launcher. You know that the issue was basically that it was spiking temps with something like 6 or 7% usage, but the main issue was that it was massively spiking temps. We're talking around 20 degrees Celsius just from the game's launcher being open, or not even open, but minimized, not installing a game, not downloading a game, anything like that, not playing a game, just the launcher was seriously affecting CPU temps. Now, at that time, we'd heard that it was mostly Ryzen owners that were having this issue, but since then, we have found out that Intel users have, and I even saw some Intel users commenting on that video saying, hey, I'm having a similar issue. At the very least with, we're talking six to 7% or even more. I do believe that I actually saw a little bit more than that. Well, thankfully they are fixing this issue. If we look right here, one of Epic Games uh, developers, I don't even want to pretend to pronounce that, but he basically tweeted on Twitter that they have identified the issue and are currently testing the fix. Not only that, um, I don't have it right here. Unfortunately, Wi-Fi is really terrible here, but he also mentioned in another tweet that when I was kind of doing some research for this, he mentioned that it is a bug. Of course, a lot of people kind of think it isn't, but at least according to him, it is a bug. Now I will say that I have heard that this has actually been an issue for a while, but it's just now gaining traction. Whether that's true or not, I'm not 100% sure, but either way, it does look like they are at least fixing the issue. But first, if you're ready to dive deeper into tech, learn the right way with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the website and app that's made specifically for math, science, and computer science. Not only that, but with Brilliant, it's easier than ever to learn computer science. See, Brilliant doesn't just explain things, but they actually teach you by doing, so you see the concepts instead of just memorizing them. Plus, Brilliant breaks up complex topics into bite-sized lessons, so you can do things at your own pace. And they've got everything from computer science fundamentals to quantum computing and even cryptocurrency. So what are you waiting for? Guide a loved one or yourself from curiosity to mastery by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermeld. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up for today, Intel's 11,700K was actually spotted in a new Geekbench benchmark and it's pretty incredible. We can see right here the 11,700K, um, and from what I read, it was able to get up to five gigahertz in this bench. Of course, this is only the base frequency, but at around five gigahertz, it actually got a pretty incredible single core score of 1,807. Now, for those who may not keep up with Geekbench and its scores and what's a good score, what's a bad score, if we look right here, we can see the average right here, average performance of the 5950X is a single core score of 1,673. That is pretty impressive considering this got 1,807. And it's also not Intel's upcoming, it's not their most powerful CPU. Now, of course, when we look at the multi-core score, it got 10,673. Absolutely, the 5950X uh, completely pummels that at 16,538, though of course, it does have double the cores. Now, once again, this at least looks like a pretty major issue with Intel's upcoming 11th gen chips. Instead of going 10 cores, they're moving back to eight cores, but 
It at least shows us while it is still on 14 nanometers that Intel's new core design is significantly better than their current core, which is technically like six or so years old at this point. So yeah, this still is very impressive. And the fact that they're able to get it at 14 nanometers, I don't even know what to say. And the weirdness doesn't stop there. When we look, a few new Nvidia or a few new laptops with Nvidia's upcoming 3000 series laptop GPUs or notebook or uh, they call them mobile GPUs. But anyway, with the mobile GPUs, we actually got some specs. Now I'm going to really quickly go over, show that the 3070 Max Q has eight gigabytes of GDDR6. Um, basically, this is a retailer. I do apologize, but they essentially listed these and they were found. And the 3060 has six gigabytes of GDDR6, but the real story here, once again, some more 3060s, but the real story here is the 3080. As you can see, it has a whopping 16 gigabytes now, not GDDR6X, but GDDR6 memory. Of course, while it isn't the new GDDR6X, the fact that they have 16 gigabytes, which is significantly more than the desktop variant is pretty wild, I have to say. The fact that you'll have a mobile variant of a desktop GPU with significantly more memory than the desktop GPU is odd to say the least. And really, I think that this just shows how much of a significant impact AMD's newest RX 6000 GPUs had on NVIDIA. Now, maybe that isn't the case, but with the fact that we're seeing the desktop 3060 having potentially rumored to have more memory than the 3060 Ti, which obviously the 3060 Ti was ready to go uh, really fast, so they didn't have enough time to change that. But the fact that there's um, a 3060 to potentially have more, it really shows that Nvidia is seriously scrambling since the 6000 GPU launch. And to be honest, I really think this shows it just as much as well. And next up for today, I've got a story that's somewhat bad news if you were hoping to get a 3080, or at least if you saw the original story. Originally, there was a story basically claiming that um, a shipment of 500,000 RTX 3080s that was missing during transit had been found. That story originally came from a site called geeknetic.es. Now, according to that, you know, it had happened, but since then we found out that December 28th is uh, effectively the April Fool's Day in Spain, um, or at least like their version of it, I guess you could say. And unfortunately, it was just that. It was a joke. So if you did see the original story or some of the outlets who had posted that story and haven't gone back to see uh, a retraction or, you know, an update and things like that, Unfortunately, it is not true. And lastly for today, what might be one of the biggest stories of the year, we just got a glimpse of the potential next-gen hardware for NVIDIA, and specifically, that is cores. As you can see right here, resident leaker copi 7 Kimmy, who has been very accurate in the past on quite a bit of NVIDIA leaks, has just discussed the upcoming Ada Lovelace architecture. And of course, if you haven't followed the channel, uh, you may not have learned that Hopper has actually changed that it, it was going to be Hopper, but unfortunately, they aren't going to be able to do the multi-chip module that they planned for Hopper. So instead, they're now calling it Ada Lovelace. Either way, the AD102 chip is apparently expected to get a 12 by six structure versus the GA102 seven by six structure. And when we do a little bit of the math, that means it can feature up to 18,432 cores. For those who don't know, currently the RTX 3090 caps out at a little over 10,000. So this is a massive, massive jump in shaders. It's pretty impressive. We're talking 144 stream processors, which would make a theoretical, let's say that it was 1.8 gigahertz, it would theoretically get an FP32 compute of around 66 teraflops per second. That's unbelievable. Basically, we could be seeing almost as much of a leap generationally as we just recently saw from Turing to Ampere 
from Ampere to Ada Lovelace. We're looking at a 71% increase in shader units uh, versus GA102, which is massive. And that doesn't include any type of architectural difference that would increase the performance even beyond just increasing cores. So basically, huge story. And of course, once again, you know, I do apologize for the terrible lighting. I've got shadows all over the place, um, had major issues, completely forgot uh, my tripod. So I have it on a light mount, have another light over here that's just laying on, uh, laying on a bed. It's terrible all around. I do apologize, but I should be home um, in a few days from now. I may have to do one more video like this, but then I'll definitely be back to my normal ones. But anyway, hopefully you did like the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you did. Um, and of course, let me know what you think about this GPU or, um, you know, the AD102 down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.